This is a quick example showing how the LED system in DDC works. Uh, it is divided into five layers of control, starting with the LED startup layer. The LED startup layer starts when you're booting up the controller and it runs only once. So if it's ever overwritten, it will sort of disappear. Here I'm using uh, color LED functions, which sets uh, a certain color and a certain brightness to a certain segment of LEDs. So starting off with uh, setting LEDs 0 to 65, that is all 66 LEDs of this wheel, um, it's setting them to the color green um, with a hex uh, format with 40% brightness. And this is a relative brightness, 40% uh, of the master volume. Um, by default, the master volume is 25% and you can use your controller to adjust the master volume. Um, but this allows you to set different relative volumes to different LEDs, sort of depending on the, the thickness of the diffusers, etc., to, to match them uh, so they have the same effective brightness. So after setting all the LEDs green, I'm setting some of them uh, purple and then some of them black, uh, just to remove the, the color from, from the rev lights. Uh, from the flag lights on both sides. Next up is LED bottom layer. Here I'm using uh, trigger LED functions. These functions allow you to have your LEDs um, turn on to certain conditions or uh, have them blinking. This is not possible with the LED startup layer because uh, bl just blinking and reacting to things has to happen in real time. I have two of these functions, one for LED number 23 and one for 24. These are the bottom two LEDs for the flag lights on the right side. Just to walk you through this function, if we look at the first one, the starting LED is 23 and the end LED is 23. So that just means we're only using LED 23. The next is uh, the condition for triggering this LED. And uh, I've just written true, which means it will always be triggered. You could write anything here, um, a condition that has to be met in order for the LED to be turned on. Then comes the color. This is a light blue color. Uh, the relative brightness is set to 25%. The next argument is whether um, the area <clears throat> should be cleared or not, which means if the conditions are not met this led or this segment of leds will be turned black so it will kind of just uh, make a, a clean a clean canvas for the led for when it's not triggered um, i've set this to true and uh, the next one is um, enabling blinking which i've also set to true and then comes the blink interval 500 milliseconds on 500 milliseconds off for LED number 24, it's just a different color. It's red and the blink interval is different. It's 200 milliseconds on and uh, 1.8 seconds off. You can now see these two LEDs blinking, the bottom two flag lights on the right side. They are blinking at different intervals because that's how we set them up. Next up is the first SIM hub layer, which is the LED mask layer. Although this is a SIM hub layer, you edit it in the firmware. Um, by default, this is turning all LEDs black before the SIM hub layer comes on. So it's like cleaning the whole controller's LEDs, turning them all black. The mask layer uh, allows you to put holes in this, this mask. So you can let some LEDs or all of them bleed through. In our LED mask, we've only made an opening for LED number 24, which is the bottom right flag light. This will allow LED number 24 to light up through the mask. So everything else is going to be cleared, but this one will light through. Uh, and as long as SIMHUB doesn't write anything with color to that exact LED, then it will show the color from the LED bottom layer. So now we're connecting to SIMHUB. The mask is going to come on and then the SIMHUB layer is going to come on, on top of that again. So everything's going to be cleared except for LED24 and um, we're going to have the LED profile for this wheel uh, come on from SimHub and that includes 
the backlighting, all um, telemetry control, the LEDs, uh, the rev lights, and all of that. And as you can see, um, the LED number 23, it stopped blinking because it can't get through the mask. So effectively, we've kind of used LED 23 to indicate that we're missing connection to SimUp. And then we've got an element in the SimHub profile that turns the LED number 24 green if a game is running. So the LED number 24 will keep blinking red until it's overwritten when a sim is running. Lastly, we have LED top and um, this layer will come on top of the SimHub layer again. So we will overwrite anything uh, in the LED profile from SimUp. I'm using trigger LED functions here as well. The first one is um, affecting LEDs 0 to 14, which are all the rev lights. The condition for triggering this is a mod button pressed. And you can look this up in the manual. It's a trigger function. And what it does is uh, if your mod button is pressed, it will be true. And if not, it will be false. Uh, I've set the color to black. And I've set um, clear LEDs, which is like um, clearing this area, turning it black if the conditions are not met. I've set that to false because if that's set to true, um, all of these LEDs will be cleared all the time, even when the conditions are not met. And that means the rev lights from SimHub won't be shown. It will be overwritten with black. So I've set that to false and also false for blinking. And if it's set to false for blinking, you don't have to write the interval. And below that, uh, LEDs five to nine, which are the middle five of the LEDs, they will blink uh, an orange color if mod button is pressed. So we can check this out, pressing the mod button now. And now we'll try disconnecting from SimUp again. And what you'll see is that the red blinking light that comes through the mask will show up immediately. And then after a few seconds, um, the controller will realize that it has lost connection to SimHub. It has like a, a five second uh, handshake timer. So it, it takes at least five seconds before we can detect the missing handshake. And um, when that happens, the firmware will run LED startup layer once again. So every time you disconnect from SimHub, the LED star player is going to run one time. And this allows us to get the initial backlights back on again. So I'm not sure how useful all of these examples are to you specifically, but it shows you how you can enhance the LED lighting of your controller by not just being dependent on SimHub. You can light it up uh, on booting. And there are some some things happening on the wheel with the switches and all that is not really available for you in SimHub. So you can make the, the wheel react to that and either lie beneath SimHub or come on top of SimHub.